Hey up, welcome to this week's video. I'm in Glencoe and I'm at one of my favourite places in Glencoe. You've got the Grand Mountains, you've got all those grand vistas, you've got the famous shots of the buckle. But there's a little place I always gravitate to. There's hardly ever anybody here. In fact, I've only ever seen one other photographer in all the time I've ever been here. And this must have been the sixth or seventh time I've visited. And it's a place called Torren Locken at Signal Rock. Every time I come here, I get superb reflections and I'm ne they're never guaranteed, of course. But uh, it's never let me down, never let me down. Ah, today's no exception. Absolutely stunning. The snow on the mountains, those reflections are just crisp and perfect. Thanks for joining me. Let's see what we can make of the place. So I've got myself nice and low for this composition. That just maximises those reflections. I've got a polarizer which I've just turned a little bit because there's a, there are a few rocks underneath the water, but I'll probably turn that back again to really bring out those reflections. Now you often hear people talk about the rule of thirds and whether or not you should break that rule of thirds. Well, this is a place or a situation where you really should consider breaking it. When you do when you're doing reflections, it's always a good idea to just get that horizon, that split between the reality and the reflection, bang on the 50%, halfway through your image. It just balances it top to bottom and uh, it, it just oh, it looks superb. I'm loving this. I've got a bright blue sky, which is an absolute shame, but what can you do about that? But I forgive it that because of the sunlight that's just catching those mountains. Oh, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Settings wise at the moment, I'm at a fifth of a second, F11, ISO 64 and uh, yeah, just getting some of those shots, just keep taking those shots. So I'm not alone on this little trip, I'm, uh, I'm with Dave again. And uh, yeah, he contacted me and said, do you fancy coming up to Scotland? Well, I were off work and well, how could I resist such a, an amazing place? I absolutely love being up here. So he's just shouted me from over the other side of the lock and he's just said, Gary, the shot's over here, the shot's over here, the light's kicking off. So I'm gonna go see what's what, go see what he's found. Um, so what I've done is I've captured this image here. This is my usual place, the perfect symmetry. So if that shot's any good, it's coming up now and I'm gonna wander around, see what else is over there, see what we can find. So I've moved around a little bit. I'm not that far away from where I was. The, bank, the other bank's just over my shoulder. Uh, and I framed this up. I'm low again to capitalise on those reflections. Looking at those mountains again, the light's still catching them. Uh, I'm now starting to get a little bit frustrated with that blue sky. I know it said it didn't matter before and I'd, I'd forgive it because of the light on the mountains, but uh, I'm looking at them now and I'm just thinking, oh, how good would that look if there's some clouds billowing up behind the mountains? It'd just give it that drama. And obviously they'd be reflected then in the water. Just give it that punch. It'd just lift, lift the image, I think. But I shouldn't be complaining. As I said, this place never disappoints. It's never let me down. And uh, yeah, I'm still so happy to be here. So as it stands with this shot, I framed it up uh, and I'm thinking square crop. Um, I'm at a quarter of a second, F14, ISO 64. And as I say, I'm going for a one-to-one -one ratio, square. I just think that looks a little bit different. It's not my normal thing. And I didn't, I didn't really want to go um, out and out vertical. I just tried it. I've got my camera in vertical orientation and that I framed a shot up like that. And then I just thought, hang on, let's, let's just have a look. Let's get it in square crop and, and on the back of the camera and see how it looks. And I'm really liking it. I'm liking the symmetry. So yeah, I'm gonna fire off this shot and you're gonna see it now. Well, 
but we've still got some light so I think I need to make the most of it I'm just going to keep moving around this was a little bit different certainly different to what I normally get I'm going to keep moving around see if we can find something else So I moved around again and uh, I found a little uh, a little rock, actually Dave just pointed it out to me, there's a rock and there's a fallen silver birch. Now I know for a fact that Dave's absolutely zoned in on that silver birch, but from this angle with the rock, all you're really seeing is the upturned roots and that's not really doing it for me. You know, each to their own, everyone sees different things in different compositions. Uh, so what I've done is I've gone vertical and, I, and I've actually excluded those roots and just having the rock in the foreground. And remember I said there were no clouds and I'm getting frustrated with that blue sky just a little bit, just a little bit. Well, then photography gods are listening to me. Either that or I've, uh, I might be winning the lottery tonight, I don't know. But uh, yeah, suddenly out of nowhere, we've got some clouds, they're billowing up, just like I said, behind the mountain, just like I hoped for. So yeah. Now we were going to dash off and try and find somewhere else. I've got another location, only about 10 minutes away, another, another lock. Uh, the sunset but I think we're going to stick around it's about 45 minutes now so we really were cutting it fine to forget anywhere else in fact we were being silly really just try cramming too many locations in one day over there to Wales the sun there's some clear skies so I'm hoping they're going to catch I'm hoping we're going to get some colour and I think I've got a composition I like let me show you Right, well, I've headed back to my classic location where I started. Uh, it's, it, it's my go-to location when I come to Torren Locken. Now, I've lost the light on the mountains, but with that potential of a, a sunset, just with those clouds starting to, uh, perhaps maybe starting to light up, I just wanted to be here. I wanted to be in this spot. Um, I've never been here for sunset, funnily enough, so that's my motivation anyway. So, yeah, the light's uh, sunk behind a mountain that's behind you, so that uh, means that the, the peaks are no longer uh, lit up. I might blend some shots from the previous in, but I, I don't think I'm going to need to. I'm hoping that there's going to be enough colour in those clouds when they do form um, that I can really make something of the sunset. They keep billowing up, as I've mentioned before, behind the mountains, but as soon as they come over, they're dispersing. But it doesn't take much. It just takes a little bit of texture, just a few clouds. And if they catch the light, if we start to get some pinks, some oranges, some reds, well, that's the dream, isn't it? That's the dream. We'll see. Let's just see what happens. We never did get any uh, light in the sky, those clouds never did light up. What they did do is they just billowed and got a bit bigger, got a bit darker, a bit more moody. 
And that were infinitely better than those plain blue skies that we had when we first got here. So I'm not complaining. In fact, I wouldn't change it for the world. It's like I said earlier, what a lovely place to be. Where else would I rather be on a Saturday evening? So I'm happy. I hope you've enjoyed the location. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and sharing the location with me. Uh, so yeah, if you find the time, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, I think uh, it's time to wrap up the day and uh, I think it's time to go to the pub and get a pint. So thanks for watching. Until next time in Scotland, I'll be seeing you.